Hey everybody, welcome to this free edition of our Trader Use Group Weekly Roundup for the trading week ending January 13th, 2023. I'm Preston Brent. Thanks for tuning in. Well, this week's theme basically is where to from here. In other words, is the momentum going to continue or are we going to run out of gas and roll over? We're at a couple of key areas here on our uh, charts. I'll show them to you in just a minute, but let's just kind of take a look at where we've been. And that'll set the stage for, you know, what the charts are showing right now. You can see everything is on the green. We've had two back-to-back -back weeks in a row of markets moving up um, as we fell off towards the end of the year last year. This is a, um, uh, a really strong start to the week. And Friday, we got earnings from several banks, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Beat, uh, when they released earnings. Um, but they gave cautious outlooks, all right? So, uh, but outside of that, they opened down, but then they worked their way back up to close up for the day. Um, you can see here that uh, year to date, the strongest, uh, the strongest player is the Russell, uh, doing really well. Over in the upper right-hand corner, you can see the Ford PE ratio is 17.37, which I think is still a little bit rich. So I do believe we're going to get some more earnings devaluations coming up here over the next uh, four weeks as we get through Q4 earnings. The dividend yield of the S&P is 1.72, 10-year treasuries at three, a little over 3.5%, which is higher than the dividend yield of 179 uh, basis points. But the earnings yield for the S&P is still at 5.5%. Um, that would give the real yield, if you throw inflation in there, even though it came down just a little bit at negative 1.20%. But look at the VIX, the VIX volatility. Once we got beyond the CPI data this past week, a lot of volatility came back out of the market and actually closed right at about 18. So we're getting down to uh, 12 months lows in the VIX. As I said, Headline CPI fell 10 basis points in December, which was about a tick lower than expected. And it was really the first decline since May of 2020. Uh, the drop brought the year-over-year -year, uh, gain uh, to 6.5% um, comparing the same time last year. 12-month increase in core CPI fell as expected to 5.7%. Uh, also the slowest pace in years. So they're both coming down. We did get weekly jobless claims. They fell to a three-month low, a little over 205,000. And we got the Michigan uh, University of Michigan uh, consumer sentiment number. Uh, it, it jumped up a little bit more than expected. In fact, it reached the highest level that we've seen since April. So consumers, which is a big part of the U.S. GDP, are continuing to spend. Okay. Um, Finally, we are getting a cooling in inflation, which helped the treasury yields come down just a bit, you know, for the week. OK, so all in all, it looked pretty good. You know, good start to uh, 2023. And you can see the best performing sector for the week was a risk on the sector discretionary it came in at a whopping 5.78 percent. The worst performing sector was more of a risk off sector staples. It was the only sector in the red for the week. It barely break even, just slightly below. And then the best performing sector for the week was communication services uh, annually, rather. I'm sorry. Uh, it was up over 9% for the year. Keep in mind that communication services was the worst performing sector last year. So we're getting some of that dead cat bounce uh, coming out of 2022. And then healthcare was the uh, so far uh, in the red for the year at basically 29 uh, basis points. So not that bad um, of a start for the year. And then, of course, if we go over to Europe, Eurozone, um, we're seeing um, uh, inflation or unemployment rather remained at six and a half percent in November unemployed. Uh, and that was kind of at expectations. We're getting uh, investor morale or sentiment strengthened a little bit. That's three months in a row for that. Meanwhile, the largest economy over in Europe, Germany, it likely stagnated in Q4, all right? Um, so we're going to see Europe probably a little bit worse for wear than the U.S. as far as a, a recession goes. Um, so, but the winter months over in Europe are a lot milder than people think. So that's helping with the gas shortage, nat gas shortage, oil shortage, all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, for the full year, German economy expecting to expand 
1.9% uh, in 22, uh, and it was down from 2.6% in 21, all right? So again, the Russia-Ukraine war, surging energy costs, all of these things are helping kind of muffle or stifle growth in um, Europe. And then, of course, in the UK, GDP grew just 10 basis points, uh, uh, beating the consensus for a 20 basis point contraction. However, the Bank of England, like all central banks globally, most of them in the, in the um, G4 and G7, are indicating that they um, are hinting at interest rates are probably going to have to rise again to really tackle this inflationary environment that they got. But you can see everybody is in the green. Euro stocks, the FTSE, CAC 40, DAX, all across Europe in the green, year to date in the green, everything looks good. And of course, if we go over to the Asian markets, Everybody's in the green there, too, from Nikkei, China, Hang Sen, everybody in the green year to date, everybody in the green for the week, just like the U.S. So all in all, not a bad start globally for the markets. OK, in Japan, we're seeing core CPI. It was up four percent year over year. Now, we haven't seen inflation in Japan in like forever. It's their fastest rate of inflation in 40 years. All right, and there's more speculation growing that the Bank of Japan is going to have to revise up its inflation forecast. Um, so we'll see how that plays itself out. Meanwhile, in China, they're opening back up after being shut down again and their zero COVID policy. I think people over there started to revolt, so they're kind of opening back up. So we're seeing some of that. But China's, you know, starting off the year in a very weakened state on the trade front. Their exports fell 9.9%. So Europe and the U.S. aren't buying as much as they normally do. So China is a pretty good little canary in the coal mine as far as where everybody else is going. So it does show that global demand is softening, right? Um, also, imports fell as well as the Chinese consumer is not spending as much. They're just coming out of COVID. And if you remember how the U.S. was when we came out of COVID, people are still frightful. A lot of the citizens believe a lot of the nonsense they see and hear on TV and read in the papers. And it's just, you know, they don't want to get out much. So it takes a while for the consumer to start spending. China's going to be no different. So we're going to see how that shapes itself up. Meanwhile, let's go take a look at the, sh uh, the charts real quick. Let me just flip this over here. We're going to start off with the E-mini S&P 500 futures, as we always do. And I'm going to just kind of show you where we're at a crossroads, or at least what I meant by we're at a crossroads. Okay, so if we look at the um, E-mini S&P 500 futures here, uh, you can see here that I've already changed over to 2023. Um, the high, intraday high for 2023, was it was this past Friday, up a little over 4%. You can see that uh, that was actually that should be the closing price. Let me just mark that and edit it while I got you guys on the on the um, hook here. So let's just change that. So the uh, closing price for 2022 in blue, uh, you can see here at 38.68. This is the E-mini futures now, not the SPX, and you can see the low price for the year. Um, so we've ratioed to the goal a little bit higher. But let me just show you what I mean by being at the crossroads. Here is a weekly chart of the SPX. There is that downsloping uh, trend line. This has been in play going all the way back to January 3rd, 2022, when we made our all-time highs in the uh, SPX. And you can see that every time we've kissed this downsloping trend line, um, we move lower. Now, remember, it takes two points to make a trend line. So... It was really officially defined uh, here in March, late March, going into April. And you can see these gains. We've had a 12.5% gain over 516 points, and we rolled over. We had almost a 19% gain uh, uh, starting in August of last year, in the summer, actually, in June, July. And then we rolled over. And then now this current gain here off the lows that we made here, we're up almost 17%, and we rolled over. And then you can see here where we're sitting right now. We're sitting right at the crossroads, so to speak, between the downsloping trend line and the upsloping. Now, this is a weekly chart. Ideally, I'd like to see one full candle open and close above this downsloping trend line. Um, so we're going to need to see some of this to get some kind of energy, kinetic energy that's going to be needed to lift the markets higher. I believe we're going to get the opportunity. We did get CPI. Markets actually were kind of unchanged 
uh, post CPI this past week, every investor was waiting for it. Okay, kind of came in at expectations. So we got two other events happening over the next um, four to six weeks that I think are going to define whether we're going to break that upsloping trend line and move above, or we're going to roll back over again. One. Of course, it's going to be earnings and valuations. And then the second one is going to be the feds. The feds are meeting on January 31st. And the first, they come out with their um, policy statement uh, on February 1st, one of those rare meetings where they're going to actually report on the first day of the month. Okay. So uh, we're going to see uh, where they're sitting here. And that is going to be enough to move us up or it's going to roll back over. This was my original target. I am still calling for a lower low sometime in March, April timeframe. I think the Fed's going to be a little bit more aggressive than the markets are anticipating. And I think it's going to spook the markets. The Fed's are going to control this. Earnings to some extent are going to give us a little bit longer term control, but the Fed's are going to move it. It's going to be the catalyst. So we got to see how this thing shapes itself up to see where we go. All right. So that's a little bit about what I'm looking at right here on this one. Now, if we come down here and we look at volatility and we look at the VIX, just to see where the VIX is going, you can see here we uh, closed the week um, right around this area here. Uh, I think it was 1835. I think it's where we closed. So um, if we look at this, we haven't been down this low in a while. If I put it on a weekly chart, now I got my VIX color coded just to give you different ranges. And you can see here, the last time we were down in this zone, it's my zone two, which is a basically choppy market. The last time we actually closed down there on a weekly basis was all the way back over here on January 3rd, when we made our highs last year, okay? And then you can just see every time we've moved up, we haven't been able to get over the 35, 36 area, but we haven't really had a sustained close and our price run rate, um, much below 16 or 17 and I think it's going to stay in this area here for the next three or four weeks until you know we see what the feds want to do um, and we get an idea of where earnings come in all right so just be prepared um, the first half of this year uh, and I'm not the only one saying this I think everybody and their uncle is saying this which kind of leads me to believe that it may be a little bit better than people think but I'm still holding to my call of making new lows uh, in the S&P uh, sometime in uh, March, April, May timeframe before we get into the second half of the year, we have another rebound from the first half of the year. OK, if we look at treasuries, uh, if we look at the bond market, you can see the bond market. Um, I believe the bond market is going to run higher. It's what I believe. I think the bonds are going to move up and interest rates are going to move down. The bond market in 2023 is going to have a good year, much better than 2022. Everything went down in 2022. Equities, bonds, uh, fixed income. There was no place to hide uh, unless you understood our trading approach. And then we all made money in our group, or at least the folks following my trades. We made money this past year. Uh, this year, I think, is going to be even more promising. Um, but this is kind of what I'm looking at for the bond market. And, of course, if we look at the interest rates, we'll look at the 10-year because that pretty much drives um everything else in the US market. If we look at the 10 year, you can see here, we're off of the highs here. Um, and I, I kind of see the, um, as bonds move up, I think the 10 year is gonna end up back down challenging the 200 EMA, down around 3.2%, all right? That's kind of what I'm looking at right now for the US 10 year over a period of time, all right? Uh, and of course, if we come down and look at currencies, this has been a great trade for our group. And for a number of folks, um, I was getting short the dollar back over here in November, and it continues to go down. You can see the pattern right now. The dollar is in the red for the year, and this is coming down off of these highs. Okay, And then our primary uh, way to execute uh, a short dollar is going along the euro, because the euro is about 57, 58 percent of the dollar index. So... Um, what we did was I, I recommended shorting the euro and here's I'm going along the euro and this was the trigger back over here in early uh, November and we've just been long since and it's just been a home run trade, right? Um, I had projected the euro to run up even uh, further. It's going to run up over 110 um, and it's just it's just a good trade. It's one of those low hanging fruit trades. We have these we have two or three of these coming out every year, and the euro's one. We got several others as well that I've pointed out. Okay, 
Um, if we look at metals, we look at gold, you can see gold is also doing well this year, right? This was the closing price of gold uh, in 22. Also happened to be the low price for 23, right around the closing price of 22. And you can see we're up for the year. That was the 22 low. I do believe we're going to move over 2,000 in the gold market for this year. Silver is going to be the same, okay? And then, of course, if we look at energy, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, you can see in the energy market, uh, we're below where we opened or where we closed last year, so we're slightly in the red. But this is a great market for the way we like to trade. And I think it's going to be a really good trade for this year as well. Okay, so we've got uh, energy that we're playing in. Nat gas is just going to be traditional nat gas. It's going to be very choppy, but very um, uh, shortable. It's hitting my target down here. We went short over here. We got out of it with profits. We went short back over here. Uh, we got out with profits right here. And while I didn't take this trade, I had suggested this would be another trade to take. You could see the cross in the 50 and the 200. Just nat gas, understand nat gas. It's got a lot of weather dependencies on it, but at the same time, it never stays up this high. I mean, I've heard never say never, but in a commodity market with supply and demand, and then you got the Russia-Ukraine issue, uh, it just got too elevated too fast. So it's just a home run trade for us. So these are some of the key trades that we like. Um, for our members, this is a holiday weekend for U.S. markets. It will be closed on Monday due to Martin Luther King Day. Uh, the futures market will open uh, Sunday evening here in the U.S. at 6 p.m. and then closed Monday at 1 and then open back up again at 6 p.m. Eastern time again. But uh, members, I will see you for our uh, normal pre-market uh, trader uh, session Wednesday morning at 730. If you're not a member, I highly encourage you to come in and check us out. We should have another really good year this year. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. Enjoy the wild card playoffs in football. Take care, everybody. Ciao now.